Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. I rise to speak against House Bill 593. As much as I'd love to put 60 or $100 into the pocket of every Georgian, I just can't. And there are several reasons for that. One, if you think this bill is solely targeted at working Georgians because it deals with the standard deduction, the 2017 tax reform changed the deduction so that many more people of very high income levels uh, still take the deduction instead of itemizing. So this bill includes people also of very high incomes who aren't really going to feel an extra 60 or $100 in their pockets. Secondly, there's a better tax reform we can do in order to target tax relief to your hardworking lower and middle income families, and that's through the earned income tax credit, which the senator from the 49th has filed and others in this chamber have filed in Senate Bill 58. But that is not the main reason I stand this morning opposed to this bill. The main reason I just can't vote for this bill is because we currently have 7,000 people on our waiting list, disabled people, waiting for community services to live in their community through the NOW and COMP Medicaid waivers. Uh, this is due to a court case years ago where it was said that these people should not be institutionalized but have, should have the right to live in their communities. And this waiting list has been there for decades. It started in the early 2000s when I was here serving in the house and I had little babies, okay? My babies are adults now. And I came back to the Senate and I found out that waiting list was still there and it broke my heart. Then I started getting the phone calls from families in my district. I know that you have gotten them too. These families who have been waiting as long as 10 years to get off this waiting list. I heard from parents who were concerned because they themselves are aging and are less able to take care of their disabled children. And if they can't get a spot for a Medicaid waiver so their child can live in their community, they're afraid that they won't be able to be taken care of. I got a call from a parent whose child was about to age out of the school system. That would be at age 21. They were still on the waiting list, waiting for services, and she was terrified that her child, who had made so many gains in the public education system, would lose all the gains if they couldn't go be involved and live in the communities which this Medicaid waiver uh, does. And Another parent told me that it costs, if you don't have the help of the Medicaid waiver, then it costs about how much it costs for us to send our kids to college. But instead of four years, it's for the rest of that child's life. I cannot stand here and vote for this tax cut when the $120 million that it represents would almost obliterate this waiting list. It would pay for to my estimation, 6,000 of the 7,000 slots. And it would continue to pay for that year after year after year. Instead, we present a budget that funds 100 slots year after year after year. And that is going to keep the balance over the waiting list at about 7,000 people year after year after year. And that is why I filed Senate Bill 208, which urges this legislature to fund enough spots on the waiting list each year that the waiting list is gone in five years. I cannot continue to ignore the 7,000 people who call us every year and we have to tell them we can't do anything for you because there are not enough spots. So to me, a vote for House Bill 593 is a vote against people with disabilities. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. Senator has yielded the well.